my position in the mosque as chairman. In 1990, I was more or less uh, forced into the position <laughs> of taking over, and uh, I, I've been chairman since then. And I, we try to we do everything that's needed for the for the mosque. The opening of the South Wales Islamic Centre, with the grace of Allah, 29th of January 1984. We invited all the. Muslim ambassadors in London, they were all invited to join us. When the Yemenis first came over, over to this country, they, we didn't have any mosques. And they purchased the house and converted that as a place of prayer. And they used to do all their salat there. And that was on Butte Street. And in about 1940, three, I think it was, it got bombed. We purchased this plot of land here from the council and uh, with what we had saved at the time, we built a mosque on there, on this ground, before this mosque was built. But it was built very, not very good quality because of the, the funds that we had at the time. So after a few years, we decided it, the best thing to do was to knock it down and go for gold and build, we built this mosque. This room here was uh, the ladies' prayer room when we first built the mosque. You know, you could hear from the, the slots there they could hear the voice of the imam. But then, with technology that we've got today, we were able to fit speakers in all the rooms. And we've also got the TV in each room where they can watch the imam read the khutbah. There was never any problems with people. The only problems we had is when we left Butone area. You had the traffic lights at the top of Butte Street there. Once you went out to there, you had to uh, be on your guard because there was a lot of hatred for us and, uh, you know, people thought we were a, a different species, you know. <laughs> but that toughened us up. We were able to look after ourselves and uh, whenever we ventured out, we dealt with things that came, came to us and later on, the people we were dealing with, we become friends with them once they got to know us. So it shows it was all down to ignorance. All the glass around the dome there, we had uh, made by Swansea University. We gave them the designs and they had an actual class at the time that did that type of work. And we asked them if they could do these, which they did. We didn't have uh, many mosques. It was only in the 50s when we had uh, our brothers from Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, India. They started coming over because they were invited over because they needed labor to run the country. You know, and people forget this, that they were invited over. They wouldn't come in as refugees. They signed up and they came and uh, they settled. And then Islam increased greatly from those days, you know. And, um, and it's expanded out. Those days we had no halal butcher shops. We had to uh, slaughter our, our own food or chickens. Everybody kept chickens in the backyard and, you know, uh, when we had Eids come in or anything, we'd go out to the farms and buy a couple of sheep and, and bring them back and slaughter them ourselves. This is our minaret, which was built after the mosque was built because we had a bit of trouble getting planning permission to build it because of the height. Uh, they didn't want us going higher than any of their things that they had in the city. Uh, but. Uh, after a couple of years of 
fighting, we eventually won our case and uh, we were allowed to build it. We've got speakers up there which uh, we use and uh, when they make the adan there, if we open the speaker for this, which we do on a Friday, we only do it on a Friday, uh, we open the, the speaker up and people can hear even in Grainstone. Mm. Well, when they redeveloped Butown, uh, they moved a lot of the, the, the residents outside to these new communities which were built. You know, the uh, Land Romney, Fairwater, Ely. And it divided, it broke up the community. So, um, and then when they rebuilt the new houses and whatnot, they brought people, troubled families from outside the area and put them in the, the new housing. And that was a problem because they brought some... Uh, some people who weren't very people friendly, you know. They'd steal off people, they treated the elderly with no respect. And uh, it's not, nothing like what the area used to be like in the early days. And we, uh, we had some very great people came out of Butown. In the boxing world, we had Joey Erskine, um, uh, Phil Edwards, they were all top class fighters. Well, Joe Erskine fought Henry Cooper for the world title. Shirley Bassey, the singer, well known all over the world, all from Butown. Tiger Bay, as they called it. Butown.